in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Productivity and value. The honor of diligence. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. It matters that we become a people who understand the power of value. He becometh poor, the Bible says, that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich please look at me i submit to you in the name of honesty that anybody who does not strive to be competent and valuable in today's world will be ready to sweep the floor of life are we together what does it mean to be valuable your value is a measure of your usefulness usefulness to god usefulness to society your value is a measure of your usefulness. Productivity, please listen. Productivity is the ability to develop your value to a point where it becomes needed and useful. Turning it into products and services that can be packaged with excellence and served to a targeted consumer base. This is productivity. It's good to be valuable, but don't just stop there. There are many people with potentials. You hear us talk a lot about potentials. Nobody is rewarded for having potentials. You are commended for having potentials, but your reward is based on your productivity. Nigeria is full of ideas. Nigeria is full of value, full of potentials. But you're, you begin to live a rewarded life to the degree to which you allow yourself to metamorphose. To a point where your products, your value now is now translated. And by products and services, I'm not necessarily just talking about business in its, in its um, the generic form. Products and services, intellectually, whatever it is that you serve with excellence. productivity productivity proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the bible says the gift of a man make it room for him i wish i had time and we were not restrained by the covid i would have given you an illustration i usually would line people here and show you that there's no space but the bible does not say the gift of a man gives him his space there is no space anywhere your gift makes room. It pushes people until your space is created. That illusion that my place is there waiting for me is, is, just, is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere. It is your gift that allocates your portion. The gift of a man. The gift there does not just mean endowment from heaven because spiritual people will now say, you see, it's not me. Mm -mm. The value of a man the value of a man developed and refined not just raw like that people congratulate you for discovery but they, they they reward you when you refine it apostle i can cook congratulations can kings eat your food and it's just a talent within me i don't know it came by itself god honored you with his mercy you did not develop it. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. When he came back and met them still looking at it like that, he said, you are an unprofitable servant. That means whatever God gives you, he should not meet it the way he gave you. Hallelujah. 
please make up your mind that I will be diligent. In this conference, we kill the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus. Mental laziness, physical laziness, any and all kinds of laziness. Make up your mind. That I will be diligent. I will be diligent. Don't sit down and envy people who are rising and get angry and wish they fall to comfort you. No. Just trust God for grace to continue to contend. Hallelujah. Productivity and value vetoes tribal limitations. Productivity and value limits gender, whatever kind of gender issues in society. Except you do not find exceptional people. You will watch systems and structures bow and crumble to allow them rise. This is true. Hallelujah. Make up your mind that you are going to be valuable. Let me show you one scripture. First Kings chapter 7. We'll read from verse 13 and 14. Are you getting blessed? First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. First Kings 7 from verse 13. Now watch this. This was the building of the temple of Solomon. Solomon was building a temple for the Lord and then he was trying to get all the human resources that will be part of that temple. I hope you know he wanted to give God the best. Now let me show you how kings work because we are talking of influence. He says, and King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. So he fetched a man called Hiram. Now look at the background. I love the Bible. It will go back and tell you the background of that person. What happened that vetoed this background? The Bible says Hiram was a what? A widow's son. That means he lost his dad. An unfavorable background. And of the tribe of Naphtali, his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk in all works of brass. And the king came to... And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. So what makes a widow's son to sit down and say, I do not just want to serve mean men. One day King Solomon will send for me. And that guy continued to rise to be diligent, to be competent, to be productive. And the news of his value got to the ear of Solomon. And Solomon said, send for him. There are people in this country, I submit to you, who cannot go out of job for up to two months. They are too competent to be ignored. I know people in this nation, respectfully speaking, who are working in three places at their terms because they literally are the heart of that company. If they cough, the company will buy a pharmacy, not a drug. Why must you think about me when you are reducing people? Why should I be the victim of situations and circumstances? Make up your mind. Mediocrity is dangerous. I am telling you this. There is no group for mediocrity. It looks like there is a group till trouble comes. And you find out that there are only two groups. Complete failures or extremely competent people. Mediocrity allows you to vacillate around the corridors of both failures and successful people. And you may flatter yourself for many years thinking you are successful or you are a failure. But when the stakes are down, you will find out that you are either extremely competent or you are a complete failure. Make up your mind. Be valuable. For some of you, this may mean taking certifications and taking trainings go for it for some of you this will mean buying certain books go for it some of you this may mean furthering your studies go for it for some of you this may mean creating private mentorship sessions with exceptional people go for it for some of you this may mean making yourself the students of knowledge for a long time go for it we are not called to do everything, but we are called to excel in that one area. Amen. Hallelujah. 
to excel in that one area. I made up my mind as a man of God, and, and, and I'll say this humorously, I made up my mind that by the grace of God, I will never stand on any man's pulpit and preach. And afterwards, they just clap and say, wow, that was nice. That's the door. Just go out and uh, one day by the grace of God, in the name of the Lord, as, as our paths cross again. No. I found out that there's no traffic with the stars. There is enough space. And do you know from anywhere you stand in the world, you see the stars. I may not see what is happening somewhere in my Tama right now. Because my view cannot get there. But when it rises to the cloud, everybody can see it. You want to be seen by everybody? Don't pressure them to see you where you are. There are too many obstructions on the ground. Rise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I challenge the men in this great church both young and old, it's time to have a signature of competence within this assembly and from this assembly to this city and this nation. There is always room for more. In politics, in government, it doesn't matter what area. And by the way, let me respond to something that our mother was trying to say yesterday. I believe Christians can and should go into politics. I believe it. Absolutely. I believe Christians can and should go into business. Many of you have heard, I'm sure, of the concept of the seven mountains. Absolutely, it should be there. You see, dominion over a territory is based on very defined structures. They are not more than seven. Number one, let me give it to us. The first mountain, mountains talk of spheres of influence, according to Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. You may want to write that down. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, it shall come to pass in the last days. Please give it to us. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills. And the Bible says, all people, not Christians, all people shall flow to it. Verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to family worship center and to the house of the God of Jacob for he will what teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and so we know that there are seven mountains that control the activities of men on earth let me try to run them I hope I remember all of them number one is called the mountain of religion that is where the spiritual conviction of a territory is shaped in every territory has some sort of religious loyalty and religious affiliation and there are people in our case now we call them pastors we call them priests and so on and so forth they are mandated to shape the religious conviction of a territory number two the mountain of family our father did enormous justice to that Every arm robber came from somewhere. Every troublemaker came from somewhere. Are we together? And so it matters if we can salvage the destinies of people at that family unit, then we can be able to project a culture in society that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Family is very, very important. Very important. Number three, the mountain of education. This is where the intellectual convictions of people are being shaped. It is very important. Did you know that most of our children spend a major part of their life opening their spirits to their teachers for a very long time? Working by the 63-4 system. Imagine the amount of time in a young man's life uh, committed to listening to another voice. And it matters what we listen to. Hallelujah. It is the reason why we, we continue to trust God that God will grant grace that our schools will be model places that you can trust the, the kind of training that your child is receiving. Not just the secular curriculum but inculcating these values also. Because the, the, the subject is not the only thing the child is learning. 
the child is also learning the attitude of his teacher hallelujah praise the name of the lord so it's important education very important number what now number four the mountain of politics and governance it is my prayer that god will raise spirit-filled anointed people but intelligent people too most i have observed respectfully speaking over the years that most people who want to get into politics who are of christian convictions do not stay to pay the price to understand the wisdom of operating in the cosmos and so they carry the ideology of church and believe that the sphere of politics is like a christian praying in tongues all the time and they meet a rude shock I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with a lot of politicians. And I can tell you, for many of them who are people of God, they think spirituality is always mentioning the name of Jesus in secular places. Not necessarily so. We're talking of having a kingdom sense. But look at Daniel. Daniel reigned through the dispensation of three kings and none of them could do without him. And yet his convictions remained hallelujah Amen. praise the lord so it is important i believe that believers should join politics but i will tell you sincerely if believers join politics just with the mindset of church they are going to be in trouble i'm not saying there's anything wrong with the mindset of church but there has to be that wisdom of being as sheep among wolves and being as wise as serpents the wisdom of living in the cosmos is different because not all men have faith there was a time that it was not paul's anointing that defended him it was his intellectual prowess he needed to outsource certain intelligence from the archives of the people within the territory so i challenge politicians and i pray that god will put it in the heart of someone to be able to have mentorship institutes for people who are prospective politicians so that right from the infancy of their ambition they begin to be mentored a non-partisan platform that begins to build people inculcating in them the mindset of leadership and governance many many of the 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 the, the i know that there are a few institutes here and there that may seem to talk about that but now we're, we're talking of dealing with things from a kingdom perspective are we blessed politics and governance one policy can frustrate your serving god forever just one you can fast all you can roll on the ground but one single policy was it not because there came another pharaoh who knew not joseph that was the beginning of the trauma and the captivity of the israelites in Egypt Joseph rose to a point of notoriety and saved his father and his brothers from hunger and they came and lived in Goshen and the Bible says that God honored God honored um, um, Joseph so much and he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphar the priest of on and then he became a great person a name was given to him and he ruled in justice and power and God's people were preserved Hadassah the lady who would call Esther it was her rising to the place of power that saved the Jews otherwise there was a man there called Haman Haman was not even a king Haman was someone in the system who had an agenda to annihilate the Jews but he took an Esther sometimes it does not take weapons it just takes influence the influence enough to be in the corridors of power please pray for politicians especially those who are of the Christian faith and encourage them encourage them are we blessed number five thank you the mountain of arts and entertainment this is where our idea about success and the celebration of it comes when someone wins and opens a bottle of champagne and pours it on his head you see your little child will go and carry a bottle of malt and pour on his own head too it's called influence the child is being mentored subliminally 
that you celebrate success by extravagance and you will think this is just a little boy until you see what he does with your car <laughs> until you see what he does with whatever it is that God has given you it is important today respectfully speaking we have all kinds of narratives about success and it came because the mountain of arts and entertainment has cultured us into thinking that the more expensive you are the more successful you are the more outspoken you are over several things the more you know we have all kinds of ideas there needs to be people there who God will help them and when they are celebrities and the whole world looks at them they can point them to Jesus and said I'm not ashamed of declaring I've always said this imagine if Michael Jackson said Jesus is Lord even by mistake he would have won more souls than many crusades put together. Influence is powerful. Do not, do not ignore the effect of the words and the life of a great man on many. You will be surprised to know how much people have been influenced. One day someone will stand and break his head in the front of people. And you'll be surprised how many other people will break their heads. And while you are laughing and say this is sarcastic, you will be, influence is powerful. People will do what they see done in the life of great people. That's why God must take a lot of people who are his people to the position of greatness so they can demonstrate to the world how to celebrate from a kingdom standpoint. Hallelujah. By the time a man is being celebrated and the whole world is looking at him, and waiting for what he will say and all his business associates and all the people within his sphere of influence they are standing and watching and he tells them let me show you how we celebrate God in this kingdom we do it on our knees Lord you are the giver of every good thing you cannot deny his success because the results are there and so you will not know when you too you will join on your knees you were not supposed to kneel down but his success forces your knees to touch the ground. Arts and entertainment. And then the last is the mountain of finance. Or media, really. The mind control system. You can hear one thing from a five minutes video that will take you two years of praying and fasting and deliverance to get out of your mind. <laughs> Let me tell you a humorous story. My, I, hope, I hope he's not listening to my father and my mom. They are still alive. And I'm just hoping he's not listening to. You know, one day my father was watching a program. It was a health program. And they were saying something about the disadvantage of, was it cabbage or something? And my father just called my mother and said, I'm hearing that uh, something can happen to cabbage that can kill. And I said, ah, mind control systems. This is a man that has eaten cabbage for how many decades? <laughs> <laughs> and now just uh, <laughs> are, are you getting are you getting it take it as a joke but now someone is in five minutes just saying something that came from a research and that's the end of it mind control systems <laughs> hallelujah the last is the mountain of finance this mountain is very peculiar because it controls other mountains. All other mountains need the products from this one. Our world today is economically driven. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's so. Proverbs 22 and verse 2, and then also verse 7. The Bible says, the rich and the poor live together. It says, God is the maker of them all. Very, very frustrating statement. Why didn't he just say men live together and God made them? What sort of stratification is this? very very insulting ego stinging statement the rich and the poor they live together and then he says god is the maker of them all he never said god made them so god made men and they stratified themselves but that is not even the disturbing verse five verses later verse seven then the bible tells us let's go to verse seven please it says 
Is it verse 7? Please look. Huh? No, no, same scripture, 22 and verse 7. Read it if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Influence now. Uh huh. Hmm. The rich, anybody, will rule over the poor, anybody. The rich. So there is a relationship between wealth and dominion. The rich ruleth. The rich. Look at the first three words. The rich ruleth. Leave the rest. Just focus on the first three words. The rich ruleth. There is a relationship between the corridors of power and access to resources. Find a way of believing. Let's not feel uncomfortable about it. Remember we said kingdom now. For as long as believers keep being poor, mommy, there is a real problem. And when I talk of prosperity, I'm not talking of money to buy suits. No, no, no. If the only thing you have is money, you are not very wealthy. We're talking of access. We're talking of influence. But we're also talking of resources. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it. Very heavy. As the Anchor Men's Fellowship, only God knows what it would have taken to put this program together. Only God knows. It takes resources to train your child in a good school so that he's not corrupted by, by the neglect that comes from the carelessness of you know, many, many, many uh, uh, platforms, educational platforms. There is a relationship between resources and peace. Yes, sir. When Jesus, when Jesus was preaching in a crusade, the tribute collectors came. Is that true? So every time you are serving the kingdom, who will come? The tribute collectors. And they came and said, you are preaching here and you've not paid tax. And Jesus said, mm -mm. give to Caesar what belongs. I'm showing you how to be a peacemaker. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And to God, what belongs to God. So a peacemaker is one who has enough resources to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And to God, what belongs to God. Many believers have ignored it. Rent issue and house issue can erode your prayer life more than you know. You will be, you will be shocked and surprised that you are praying and you, can, you even forget that you are talking to God. These are believers in the name of honesty. Let us be very, very sincere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God forbid, but there are people who have had issues with their health. And the amount that they spent within one month was probably someone's bill for a lifetime. Satan knows that whoever controls the resources makes the rules. We must trust God for grace to be able to rise to that position where he will grant us an opportunity to serve his purposes. Seven mountains. Let me just talk on one more area and we're done. Is that fine? So we spoke on our spiritual connection, transformation, diligence. Please be diligent in the name of Jesus. Make up your mind. Don't sit down wishing for resources to come. Don't sit down wishing to rise to a position of notoriety by default. Mm -mm. Someone met me one time and he said, can I imagine after suffering and going to school, nobody wants to employ me. And I, I spoke to him sincerely. I said, convince me that you are employable. Just convince me. I give you five minutes. Say anything. Just convince me that you are employable. And it wasn't to be, and, and you know, you told, okay, I read this and that. I said, no, that's not the issue. I only employ you to solve a need. I don't employ you to honor what you read. I employ you to solve my need. So if your value is not needed and useful to me, I appreciate your sacrifice, but clearly you are not going to get a job. It's one thing to be educated. It's another thing to be employable. And value can bring you to that point. Is God speaking to us? 
One more time, can you speak to yourself and say in the name of Jesus, the grace to be competent. Please pray. The grace to be competent. You will thank God for this conference and you will thank God for this session. The grace to be competent. The grace to be competent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Competence is powerful. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. No wonder he succeeded. At age 12, when his colleagues were running around, he was in the temple learning from the scribes and the Pharisees. I can almost bet that he most probably would be one of the young people there. And from age 12, the Bible is silent about 18 more years in Jesus' life. We do not know what he was doing for those 18 years. But the next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old young man. Having been baptized by John, he now began to teach what we call the Beatitudes. Introducing to them a kingdom. And he commanded such influence that the powers that be in those days, they were threatened by his existence and the power that came from him please be competent you have a salon trust god for grace that kings and the nobles in this city will come to your place are we together you have a school make up your mind that you will raise the standard to a point where everybody who comes out of your school will beat their chest and say god has done it you have a business make up your mind do not be satisfied making profits be satisfied making an impact let's talk on relationships the fourth pillar let me a few minutes and then we're done I really am trusting that in the name of Jesus after this conference there will be testimonies we're going to pray shortly but listen it takes time to be great. The things that we are listening to now, some of them may not be spectacular, but these are the systems. If you ever are interested in rising to that position of influence for the sake of his majesty, then pay attention to these truths. They are not opinions. Every great man here will tell you that these are the keys, the ladders. Relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Your resources even come out of your relationships. Please listen. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ that has secured your eternal destiny. That's how powerful relationships are. Just for ignoring a relationship with Jesus, you pay the price with your eternal destiny. It is our relationship with the Holy Spirit that supplies us the guidance and the wisdom, the direction that we need in life. It is our relationship with the Word of God that gives us the mindset of the kingdom. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. We are able to get the mind of Christ because we have a relationship with the word. It's the relationship of a wife and a husband that produces the offsprings. It is a relationship between a man and his teacher that provides knowledge. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationships. The easiest way to become successful that I know is through relationships. Many of you who may have listened to my teachings, you've heard me say, who hates you in this life does not matter, but who likes you matters. Oh yes, it does. Please hear me, it does. A king rejects a woman and overnight she stops being queen. And the king likes another village girl and in an instant she becomes queen. Who likes you matters. The Bible even said, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, 
God rewards him by making even his enemies to be at peace with him. Please listen to me. There are certain gatekeepers in the corridors of destiny that you cannot bind and cast. They are gatekeepers honored by God himself. How could Joseph have cast uh, Pharaoh? No, he couldn't bind and cast and say, Pharaoh, in the name of Jesus, get out of that position, I'm coming. It's a joke. He had to pray, God, give me favor with Pharaoh. There are people, the only way the gate is open is for God to make them like you. My life is a product of what it means when somebody likes you. Listen, when God puts somebody in your life and puts people in your life, they can accelerate your journey of decades in a moment. And I mean it literally. Now, we live in a very arrogant world where people always like to take the credits of their growth to themselves. They always want to give a narrative like nobody assisted me. I pushed through by myself. Ask Jesus on his way to the cross. Your Jesus was so tired, he had bled, lost blood, and he fell and would have... If Jesus died on that ground there, he could not become sin. Because the law is that cost is the man who hangs on a tree, not dies on the ground. And Jesus needed a relationship with a man called Joseph of Simon of Cyrene. Simon carried the cross for him. Prophetically, that was Africa. Carrying that cross. Participating and helping Jesus to get to the cross. All men need men to rise, not just God. You need God, I, I agree. But when it has to do with the corridors of power and influence to fulfill this kingdom mandate, you also need men. Please may God deliver us from that illusion that makes us believe all I need is God. If you say that in terms of um, declaring the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you say it to mean every man can go places, I will rise alone. Please wake up. Please wake up in the name of Jesus. We need men to rise. As politicians, you need a man to rise. As business people, you need a man to rise. The matters of your destiny can be at the mercy of a man's signature for years. Have you been taught that one of the ways God blesses men is by connecting them to other men? Favor relationships that sustain the ability to transit you to enviable dimensions. Someone is sitting here right now. It is not as if contracts have stopped. It is not as if employment has stopped. But for God's sake, you can be Joseph in the pit. But who is the wine presser that will speak to the king for you? Your value is needed in the palace. Your talent is dying in the pit. Between the pit and the palace, there must be one person. Please lend me your attention for the next 10 minutes because I want to share with you something that is a personal revelation God gave me. And it changed my life about men and relationships. When I found the key, I cried, I jumped, I said, I found something that can take me beyond my background. I found something. You know, the Bible says the kingdom is like a man who found a treasure and sold everything he had to buy the whole land because there must be more there. Wise man. My life has changed and continues to change. And I'm praying that in the next five to ten minutes as I share with you this, some of you, while you are sitting, you will be seeing the dots connecting that truly it's time for me to live out this mandate. But this may be the reason why my family has been subjugated. This may be the reason why my business, my ministry has been down. So pray one minute. Open my eyes. Please pray. I assure you your life is about to change. pray i know your life will change it's not it's I'm, I'm, this is no guesswork 
the things that we have seen the things that we have heard even that which our hands have handled of the word of life that is what we preach hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen glory be to the name of the lord mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 jesus open our eyes mark chapter 2 please we have to pray let your spirit be open we're soon going to pray in this place i assure you that you are not going to go back the same way you came we didn't just come here to receive an information after you receive an information there is always a grace that comes upon your life that is the grace that makes what you have heard to work in your life information alone would only be a lecture but there is an engracing of the spirit mark chapter 2 please help us media and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house verse 2 and straightway many gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them this is jesus now and they came unto him who are the day the bible does not tell us they came unto him bringing one sick of palsy which was born of four and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy laid five and when jesus saw their carelessness and when jesus saw their foolishness he said unto the sick of palsy son your sins be forgiven and all of that and all of that now leave it leave it there the Bible lets us know that there was a man who was sick and had been desiring a miracle. That man was paralyzed and he could not take himself there. But certain men came to his life and said, today you must be healed. They made it a mandate to carry him to a crusade ground. And when they saw the crowd, they said, we love you too much to let you go back. And we are going to pay for the roof we'll spoil now. Forgive us. But we are that desperate for this person to rise. The Bible never tells us their names. Yet the Bible does not ignore their insistence to see that that man is healed. Do you know that if they had left that man on that crusade ground and went back, they have tried. I hope you know. They would have tried. And I use you too, you have seen we tried we came the crowd is so much even us who have legs we can't pass ladies and gentlemen by this scripture let me introduce you to a mystery that the lord showed me a few years ago it's called the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers please write it down we're at the gates of influence now mm. hi -ya, hi -ya, ha. Yeah, 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 hi -ya, hi -ya, ha. yeah, yeah, you will never be the same. You've touched his grace, your life must change. You help that guy, please help that guy. There's oh my god, the COVID is there, so hold on, please. Hold on, let me say this. Hold on. Please be sensitive, huh? You look at me. Now, please listen. We have to observe the COVID. Um, um, my father is here and he heads this, so we have to be compliant. Now, two things I want you to do for me while I talk. Please help me. If anybody is under the anointing close to you, um, just hold the person there gently, yeah? Number one. Number two, please and please in the name of Jesus when it's time to pray still do your best to observe the social distance I don't know how you do it but in the name of Jesus there is grace for us are we together so help that gentleman under the anointing there what I want to share with you if you will listen to me in the name of Jesus you will come back and thank our mother you will come back and thank this fellowship are we ready please sit down
The Bible talks about the ministry of men to men. The Bible lets us know that it is the cooperation of God and men that lift men. That men do not just rise because there is a God in heaven. Men rise because they are also men. God himself is not ashamed of his need for men. Hear what God, the almighty God says, I search for a man. His eyes are running to and fro, not looking for animals, looking for a man. For 400 years, the prophecy of the exodus of Israel in Egypt had come, but there was no man prepared enough. And 30 years had to be added to prophecy because a man was not ready. To the point that when it was time to save men, Jesus could not come as the God Jesus. He had to become a man. Today, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, not as a spirit. He went bodily and he seated as a man. Do you know why? So that he can come back again. The Bible never said the Father is coming back again. Mm -mm. If Jesus went back as a spirit, he would not be able to come back again. So he went back this same Jesus. Are we not Bible students? That he will come back the same way he left. Hallelujah. So it takes God and men for men to look like God in experience that there is a dimension of your lifting no matter how you pray and no matter how you fast god must introduce men to your sphere to lift you now unbelievers know this but many people in the body of christ have ignored the ministry of men in an attempt to supposedly honor god i came from a background where Every time we're worshiping God, we're told to ignore men. Don't worry about any man. And sometimes it was well-meaning. They meant it to say God is the ultimate answer. I agree. But hear me, brothers and sisters, without men in your life, prophecy will remain in the realm of the spirit forever. I assure you. The Bible talks about the utopian eunuch. That when he was on his way from worshiping in Jerusalem and he was going back, the Spirit of God took a man, Philip, and he met him. And when he was reading the Messianic prophecy, he said, join this chariot. And he told him, he said, who is this talking about? And all of that. And he said, well, I cannot except some man teach me. For God so loved men, yet men hate men. God is there loving men and doing his best to reach men. And yet men have ignored men. Our prayer requests have passed us every day. Our answers have passed us every day. Our breakthroughs, our liftings. But because we do not understand this system of the kingdom, we have been stagnated for a very long time. Destiny helpers, please write this down. Destiny helpers are men and women anointed, commissioned, and authorized to hold your hand and help lift you to the next level of life. Destiny helpers are men and women anointed, commissioned, authorized to hold your hands and to lift you to the next level of life. Every realm you are praying for today, someone is already there. There is no realm that is empty. Your prayer request is on the table of somebody on earth today. Whether it is job, whether it is business, whether it is an opportunity, it is breakthrough, whatever it is. And so when God wants to lift you and bring you to a position of influence, in addition to intellectual prowess and all of these things, he will begin to introduce you to strategic people. Some of these people are gatekeepers. They are not all Christians, but they are gatekeepers. And God himself recognizes their office. And no matter what you do, they are honored by him. Now, this is a mystery. Please listen. Understand what I am telling you. 